Uh, should we just go in a circle? Yeah. Starting now, you guys got 10 minutes. Right. 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Easy question. Put up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gabby. So I wanted to ask, how, what was the process of figuring out what needed to be taken from the comics or touch into this show? Because it's that's drastically different between the movies. We're, we're doing like no spoilers, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, I mean, I, we can discuss them, we just can't yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Uh, what the process was, um, it's like you want it to make sense to people who've never seen any of Scott Pilgrim before, or maybe they were just born or whatever, uh, and then, but you also want it, there's so many millions of people who have seen the movie or have read the books, and you have to say something that works for them too, so that was kind of like a really narrow target to hit of like, does it make sense, but does it also resonate for people who are like intimately familiar with all the material, so, um, yeah, it was a process of, of bringing new stuff and having fun with it and knowing that we have this cast and that we have all these characters to play with and wanting to have fun, wanting the audience to have fun and wanting to all make sense and, and be layered and, uh, and to work with the way that people process the information these days, the way people watch shows these days, it's, it's different. And um, I think we did an okay job, <laughs> I think. So far from what I'm hearing, people are, are really into it. Kids have been into it, so I'm, I'm excited for a episode. Um, I'm here, nice to meet you. Um, it looks kick-ass, sorry I was killing it. I would love to hear more about sort of the process of working with them and then also kind of like having them punch up some of these action sequences yeah. in a way that's so intrinsic to animation. Yeah, well it's so intrinsic that we had to approach it that way, right? Okay. Like, so when the first thing I think about with anime is action and like villain scenes and cool, cool shit, so uh, we started off kind of like writing this, the action scenes and we realized quickly that we should just write them as loosely as possible, send it to Saru, they come back with something amazing, and then we kind of start rewriting the scripts and be like, oh, it goes this way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, especially like some of the big, like, the big Roxy Ramona scene has a lot of amazing stuff, and we tried not to guide it that much. Like, we had to let go to some degree, and it's just uh, let those artists do what they do best, and let their imaginations go wild. Um, what was the impetus for revisiting the, the, this world, these characters, this story, and you know, obviously not spoiling it, but you know, going back to it in the way that you ultimately yeah. decided to. Um, well, I mean, it's just, it's never gone away. Scott Pilgrim has just been a part of my life ever since. I thought it would fade away, it never did. <laughs> and like I said, like young teens and stuff keep talking to me and they're, they're discovering it new. So, um, <clears throat> I just felt like I have to keep giving back to people because they just keep coming and they keep getting excited about it so how can I how can I show them the love that they're showing me is, is by trying to make something that is the same but new and that is exciting and fresh and funny and stupid and uh, all those things and emotional um, so yeah just revisiting it like yeah, I, for years I didn't think it would make sense or I didn't know what would want it but, but um, pieces just started falling into place and, and at the time that we started doing the show it just it just felt natural and uh, it felt like the, the, all the friction went away and we were just like in the I don't know I don't know what the metaphor would be but like it just it's just suddenly became the right thing and the easy thing to do um watching the film and reading the original books I saw some panels were translated directly to the screen yeah but it was 2D into 3D. Now that you've gone 2D to live action, yeah. right. Now that you've gone 2D to 2D, did you find that you were able to overcome any limitations that you may have come up against right. during the first adaptation? Uh, I guess so. I mean, like, yeah, it seems like a natural fit. I think fans kind of understand that too. Um, that animation and comics kind of go hand in hand. Um, but. You know, Edgar Wright did such a kick-ass job. Like, the people still cite Scott Pilgrim as, like, the best video game movie, the best anime movie. It's not a video game or an anime until after the movie. But, um, <laughs> you know, it, I think they're right in a lot of ways. Like, he did, he, he really established that visual language. Um, so, yeah, it's not a matter of trying to compete with the movie, but of, of trying to, like I said, like, let the animators go wild and do what they do best. And, you know, there's no gravity in animation unless you draw it that way. So it's it's uh, it's much freer, um, 
And as long as it kind of follows an emotional logic, uh, you can get away with a lot more. Which I try to do in a comic, but my drawing is fairly limited and it doesn't move. So, uh, but in terms of the anime, like, what I was really into was just being able to write stuff I would never be able to write in a comic. Like, for example, sound. <laughs> like, there's a whole scene where, uh, you know, some characters are playing music together, which which became one of my favorite scenes in the whole show. Uh, and that's something I never could have done. So the, there's a lot of a lot of hard work went into making those scenes feel organic and natural. But uh, it, that was the dream, uh, just to, to do something that that uh, outside the comic sphere. Thank you. Thank you. And about the movie, like people really love the original cast portraying these characters in these roles. So what was it like bringing that cast back after 13 years? And how did that process help develop the show? Yeah, I mean, they, they so defined the characters. Um, you know, the books were written a long time ago. I was still pretty young. I was like 25, 26 when I was writing the first two books. And um, I had never met a movie star or been to a movie set. So like the Lucas Lee thing, was very a little bit uh, vague in the book, or you don't go into too much detail in the book. But then Chris Evans brings so much to it. And how could you go back to the book from that? How could I just go back and readapt the book exactly? That would be disappointing to people, I think, because um, Evans just brings so much to it. It's just one example. Um, but I mean, every character was kind of rounded out, and a lot of details were filled in. Because I learned that's what actors do, right? They bring their own background, they bring their own research, and. Um, now that we have all that to work with, and also the fan response and the, the way the fans have kind of like grown the characters in their own imaginations, um, I have to take all that stuff into account when, when writing a new version. So between the original books and the movie, the, new, the anime has a lot of very different storylines. One is that even I was very surprised at. Which one of those storylines story were you most excited to kind of dive into? How can I get into it without spoilers? Um, well, it was just fun to kind of turn the storylines on their heads a bit, or to, uh, there's a lot of kind of reverses of fortune in the series, the new series, and, um, you know, Matthew Patel gets to stick around a little longer and do some interesting stuff, and, and everyone kind of gets to mix it up, but it's really hard to say anything too specific about it without breaking all the spoilers. Which I'm, I'm so dedicated to like everyone. I really want everyone to see it fresh and to not know what they're getting into. Because I think that's the fun of it. Um, with the promises would never run until after the premiere. Um, I would love to ask about Scott's uh, J pop unit with the, with okay. the Katsunagi twins. Can I ask just like how that song you guys all seen the later episodes? Yeah. yeah, just checking. Sorry, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 yeah. Um, well, it's, I don't know if I have like a straightforward way that we got to that, but do you know the song was uh, an anime reference, like it's from Bubblegum Crisis? Oh, right on, I didn't catch the reference. Yeah, so it's, it's very old school anime reference from like Bubblegum Crisis from like the early 80s. Um, and that song is the opening of the very first episode of Bubblegum, Bubblegum Crisis. So when, I don't know, I've always loved that song and uh, we thought it would be so funny to have that actor sing that song yeah. in Japanese yeah. and then Science Star who did such a kick-ass job turning it into like this wacky music video that I'm obsessed with. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I love that. I really hope it surprises people. I know people won't necessarily get the reference. You don't have to get the reference. Just hearing the guy sing in Japanese is it's amazing to begin with. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a natural outgrowth of all the interests and, and the direction the story was going. There's a, a wonderful synergy between the original stories and the movie and the video game, which came out again a couple of years ago as a re-release because it listed and that whole thing, and now that new show. Is, so there's kind of this, uh, you know, they, they were all on the same core story, but in this like circular way where you can kind of approach it from any angle and enjoy everything as they come. Is that something that, like, you know, did you know that you wanted to build a Scott universe? Uh, yeah, but it's, it's not, it's like four universes. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know, um, yeah, I just, it just, uh, I like that each medium has its own strengths, and obviously each medium has its own weaknesses, too, so, um, I don't know how I would say I, I approached the, the anime. Like I said, like the action, the villain scenes, stuff like that was at the top of my mind. Um, so that just kind of dictated how I would approach the story, um, how David and I wrote it. And uh, I don't really have 
like a really super solid answer there. Um, but I, I, I always like, uh, I wouldn't want it to be exactly the same. I think it would suffer from comparison. Uh, the movie already perfected so many of the jokes, so many of the action scenes. Um, and people are already like looking at the trailer and being like, oh, it's not as good as the movie. But, you know, so I, it's, I think my point is proven there. Like, it, it should be different. It should be its own take on the story. And um, ultimately, I'm, I'm really happy with all of the different versions. And I think the fans kind of get it when they, when they play the game and they watch the movie. Like, it expands things in a way that is maybe not normal for, for geek media. But it's, it's, I think it's really fun. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.